Hey, did you know you can write SQL data definition language code right here in Excel? It's awesome. This is how you do it. Let's say you have a data file that looks something like this, and this would be a very common format for a CSV or Excel file, and we want to get this into our database. Now, in this example, we're going to be using PostgreSQL, but this same process will work for really any relational database. And if you have any specific questions or problems, you can ask in the comments below. So here we see some column headings at the top, and these are going to make really excellent attribute names in our data definition language. But a couple of things we want to watch out for are any names that are really long or kind of weird or have spaces in them. And many DBMSs will allow attribute names to have spaces in them, but it's going to create you a lot of headache down the road. So I would always suggest getting rid of these spaces. I'm going to rename first name to be just F name and last name to be just L name. Excellent. We're in good shape now. So what I'm going to do first is just create a new worksheet in Excel. This is nothing that I'm going to be using for a long time. This is just a little bit of temporary work area. And I'm going to take all of these column headings that we're going to be calling our attributes. I'm going to control C to copy that. I'm going to come over to my new worksheet I've created and just anywhere in here, I want to paste this. But I don't want to paste it as a horizontal row. I want to do a special kind of paste. So let me undo that. I'm actually going to right click and see here we have some special paste options. Paste values can be really useful if we want to get rid of the formatting or get rid of any formulas that were in the cells. But what we're going to be using today is the transpose paste. And this takes our horizontal row and converts it into a vertical column. So now we just need to add our data definition language or DDL code above this. So I'm going to start by saying create table and I'm going to call my table employees and open a parenthesis. And then for each one of the attributes, we just need to provide a data type. So looking back at our data, it appears that employee ID, these are all going to be numeric values. Then we have character strings for first name and last name and a numeric value for salary. So back on this sheet, I'm going to say employee ID is numeric and then a comma because we're going to create a comma delimited list of attribute names and their data type. For these strings, first name and last name, we'll just use the very versatile varchar data type and we'll give it a length of 100 because I'm pretty sure that's going to be plenty for all of the values we have here and probably long enough for most first names and last names. We'll do the same varchar 100 again and then salary again will be numeric. And there are many different types of string and numeric data types. Those are discussed in another video that you can check out below. But when we get to this last attribute, we don't need another comma. We need to close our parentheses and end with a semicolon. All right, just that quick and easy. We've got some basic data definition language code here. Now we could also use this time to add some different constraints and characteristics of our attributes. For example, if we wanted to say that employee ID was going to be our primary key, we can specify that just like this. Awesome. Now we can just copy this, go over into Postgres, paste, and execute that statement. And we see here table employees created. That is most excellent. But of course, at this point, if we look at the data that's in this table, we see that we've got nothing. Well, let's resolve that. Now, of course, we could use a data import utility, but maybe we've only got a few records we want to import, or maybe we don't have access to the utility. Like there's any number of reasons we might want to get data into this table in a different way. So let's write some SQL in Excel. I'm going to flip back over to this uh, worksheet where I have all of my employees and I'm going to insert a new row here uh, to give myself a little bit of space to work. Now recall that the format for an insert statement is to say insert into the name of the table, then the word values, and then in parentheses, a comma delimited list of the values that you want to insert. 
Now, alternatively, if we don't know the order in which the attributes were specified when the table was created, or if we don't want to insert a value for every attribute, we could say insert into whatever the table name is, then in parentheses, a comma delimited list of the attributes, then the word values, then in parentheses, a comma delimited list of the values. But in this case, we're gonna skip over listing the attributes because we know what those are and we're going to be inserting the values in the same order. Okay, so let's start our insert statement right here in this new column that we've created. Let's say insert into employees values, then open paren, and now we need to get all of these values into this statement. This is what Excel does best. We're gonna transform this into a formula so we can concatenate the values of all of these other cells. So in order to tell Excel that we want this to be a formula, we're gonna go right up here to our formula bar, start with the equal sign, and then wrap this string of characters in quotation marks. And when we do that, well, everything looks pretty much exactly the same, and that's what we would expect. But now, the contents of this cell are much more powerful because we can uh, do some additional things like concatenating values of other cells. So we're gonna do that by putting an ampersand, that's Shift-7 on most keyboards, that's the concatenation uh, operator, and then click on the value that we want to concatenate to this string that we provided. In this case, the value of imp ID, and I'll hit enter, and yeah, that's awesome. If we just drag this down, we see all of those values get automatically populated there. But we've got more work to do, so let's keep going. Up in the formula bar now, we want to concatenate to this a comma so we can provide our next value. So after B2, that's the cell we're referencing, another ampersand, open quotation mark, comma, close quotation mark. Now we've got our comma concatenated. Now we want to concatenate this value for first name. And one thing to keep in mind, since this is a string, we need to wrap it in single quotes. So after our comma, but before this quotation mark, I'm gonna add a single quote. And you see now that's in our output. And to that, I want to concatenate this value in cell C2. All right, that's looking good. Now we want to concatenate a single quote to close that, another comma, and then another single quote to wrap around atoms. So ampersand, quotation mark, single quote, comma, single quote, another quotation mark. All right, that's looking good so far. Now concatenate to that, atoms, then concatenate to that, a single quote and a comma. We'll close that quotation mark. That's looking good. Now for this value salary, since this is a number, we don't need to wrap it in quotation marks. We can just concatenate that value directly, looking good. Now we just want to concatenate to that, our close parenthesis and our semicolon to end the SQL statement. All right, that looks good. So I'm gonna just drag this down. And you see now we have 20 insert statements. This is awesome. This is gonna get our data into this new table that we just created. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna head back over to Postgres. I'm going to paste this. I'm gonna select all this, click the Run button, and we see all of these statements executing. So you see here, it took uh, about three seconds for these 20 SQL statements to execute. And if we were to say select asterisk from employees, we have some data here, right? And we have some data that we can run queries on. Uh, if we wanted to see all of our employees that have a salary that's greater than $200,000, we could do something like that. But wait, what if I told you we could be more awesome? You know, that took almost three seconds. That's kind of a long time for a computer and for not very much data, just in data about 20 different employees. So let's actually delete the data we just inserted. And I'm going to show you how to write this insert statement to be much, much more efficient. So I'm going to say delete from 
employees. And if we don't provide any criteria here, it's going to delete all 20 rows we just inserted. And that's okay, because we're gonna do it again, but we're gonna do it much, much faster. I mentioned earlier that when we insert values, we are inserting a comma delimited list of values. But another way we can write an insert statement is to insert a comma delimited set of comma delimited values, okay? And so in order to do that, we're going to continue to start with insert into employees values, and then this first comma delimited list of values. But instead of just ending this statement with an ampersand, we're gonna put a comma here. And now in all of our subsequent rows, we don't need to restart this insert. We just need to start with our parenth open parentheses. So I'm gonna delete that. And instead of a semicolon at the end of each one of these, I'm gonna put a comma. I'm gonna drag this down. And then at the very end, we don't need to end with a comma, we need to end with a semicolon, okay? Now at this point, what we have is a comma delimited list of sets of comma delimited lists of values. So if we copy this over into Postgres and we run this, we have one insert statement that occurred, inserting all 20 rows, and it executed in just 0.13 seconds. That's much faster. That's awesome. That's how you do it. Go forth and do great things.